Hey everybody, we're live, and uh, the moment that Vinny Las Penosa, our Zenny 60 blog vlogger, says he can't wait for is now upon us. Awesome. Mark, Google and I am is with us, and for those of you who have uh, been under a rock or something like that, I'm happy to introduce my friend. I actually, I got to give a shout out to and blame. Yeah, there it is. Hey. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, that's what we I met did. at Yeah, Hilton Bayfront, and uh, the outstanding music producer um i look like a muppet i must have had oh at least one person by that by the point that picture was taken <laughs> if that's the case then we look like brothers mark because we're almost there we're like we're like that you know, makes me Miss Piggy, damn it. <laughs> I, uh, I feel like you and Blake are, are looking like regular human beings, and, and I look like I've got someone's hand up my ass. No, I, you guys have more hair than me, so you got, you, you know, you've got, yeah. some, you got well, it down. We think that's God bless him. God bless him. Yeah, and, and, uh, I, yeah, yeah. and uh, so, and anyway, Mark is an incredible contributor to American culture, oh, uh, wow. American screenwriter television producers, comic book writer, and novelist best known for the television stories L. Stone, Arrow, of course, and the Arrowverse, including Legends of Tomorrow, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, the executive producer of the animated series Tales of Arcadia, as well as the writer of the feature films, one of my favorite, actually, Green Lantern, 2011, and Percy Jackson. <laughs> you and, win. <laughs> and, no, seriously, I wasn't just, hey I, hey, I spent money to see that twice, okay? I'm serious. I really I'm did. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I think, no, I thought it was outstanding. I, I have to. I have to honestly, like, I really do have to learn to take a compliment and not be so self-deprecating. Because the truth <laughs> is, I, I do. I do actually meet a lot of people who, uh, like, actually were like, "Oh, Green Lantern is actually pretty good," or at least it wasn't that bad. And um, yeah. you know, so I, I, you know, it has its fans out there, and I'm thankful for for all three of them. Yeah, um, yeah. Yes, that, too. <laughs> right yeah. I actually had I'm the still opportunity feeling to interview, that Hal Jordan. <laughs> and I had the opportunity to interview Ryan Reynolds at of all places Super Bowl 50 in San Francisco after that. So that was oh, because hey. of yeah, that's yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that's so, very cool. Oh, it was outstanding. And so, at any rate, I'm introducing Jessica, and Jessica, beyond the first question, is gonna get out most of them. Uh and um I'm going to start with this. Before we talk about your latest projects, I got to ask you for your thoughts on what is the end of the Arrowverse, uh, or for me, why does it have to end? And well, that's a great question. Well, I think, well, I'll take the second part first. Um, it, it doesn't have to end, but it clearly is obviously ending. And I think it we we it ran into sort of a perfect storm. On the one hand, you've got Discovery buying Warner Brothers. Um, and vastly downsizing everything. Uh, you know, Legends and Batwoman were not canceled by the CW. It was Warner Brothers' decision not to move forward with those shows. Um, and at the same time, what, what would be bad enough, right? Uh, one corporate merger. But in addition, obviously, you have Nexstar buying the CW and changing the way they're going about programming their slate. So... You know, like I said, I think one of those was survivable, uh, two of those uh, much less so. Um, so it is a shame. Uh, I, for me, and this sort of gets to the first part of your question, for me, that look, every all good things come to an end and everything sort of ends. My, I'm personally, just as a writer and a creator, I'm disappointed that it's not going out in sort of high style. It would it would be nice to go out with like a mini series or, or some story that that you know, resolved all, any dangling plot threads and, and sort of just, you know, go out on go out on a high note. Um, and to a certain extent, television doesn't really work like that. Um, you know, you don't you don't have like a full series to end an entire, you know, group shows. Um, but it's so because as shows, you know, unique. Um, so it's uh, it's a shame. It's a bummer. Um, but you know, that is such as life. Uh, and uh, Jessica? Your oh. So kind of piggybacking off of that, um, the theme with Arrow, and I was amazed by just how 
uh, you know, how long it went. Were you surprised by that? Because I was happy to see it be that successful. And typically with superhero TV series, it doesn't normally go for that long. And you, you created that kind of a core part of the, of the DC verse in that show. Can you talk, were you surprised by the success of it? Beyond surprised, um, beyond surprised. I mean, the truth is, you know, we we never we never really anticipated basically first to the same way it ended up doing. Um, we never, you know, we just thought like it, all we can do. We, we you know, Greg and I were coming off of the twin disappointments of the Green Lantern movie and Eli Stone, and you know, all, all really we were um, hoping is to get a show on the air that had the nuts that would allow us to stay on the air. And we thought in a perfect world, our wildest imaginings, it would run five years. You know, that's why all of us on the island for five years. Um, you know, it, the idea that it would run eight, um, you know, it never entered our minds. Uh, we, we didn't we never thought it was possible uh, because you're right. You know, not too many shows run that long and not too many uh, superhero shows in particular run that long. So, uh, you know, if you had asked us, I, I think, you know, there, if you have a time machine, go back in time and ask me and Greg to bet money on a variety of different things related to Arrow. And you could you could make some good money that way because <laughs> <laughs> we were wrong about everything. Well, I know Stephen Amell keeps that that fandom alive like he's ready to come yeah. back online all the time and there are thousands of fans online that are like all about oliver and they're not going to let him go you know they want it back so that's pretty love, amazing and, and and truth be told like i think you know i think we would all be very interested in in returning to the arrowverse or returning to arrow in some way shape or form i i think I personally would like to wait a little bit longer. You know, we haven't been off the air that long. Um, I also, you know, I, I would love for us to whatever work and you know, to have a bigger budget to be able to, you know, sort of really, you know, blow the off the place. Um, you know, see what happens. It's, it's, you know, like I said, there's a new hands. You know, James Gunn is, uh, you know, doing things. Uh, with the DC verse, I think um, it's you know it's all kind of up for grabs at the moment. Uh, but it's terrific that you know it's terrific that Steven's you know reprising his role and and David's reprising his role on Flash. That's wonderful. Um, and it and you're absolutely right. You know, God bless Steven for you know he he does keep the fans engaged. He's always been amazing at that. I think I think Steven was you know, Arrow came on just as Twitter was becoming a thing, and you know right. and you know, been really like I I consider Stephen a pioneer in the modern way of you know a actors engaging with fans, uh, particularly particular kinds of them. Um, I hard pressed to think of any other actor who done it to the extent he has. I'm certainly uh, not capable of thinking of an a another actor who's done it as well as he has. No, he 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 really does interact with. I've seen him on Facebook doing it. He he just keeps it lot going, and he 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 really loves it, which is fantastic. I I really appreciate that. Um, it's really genuine. One thing that I wanted to ask you, and I'm kind of jumping around here a bit. I'm going to pick your brain about Legends of Tomorrow in just a moment, but I wanted, okay. <laughs> but I wanted to um, ask you about your history because you you have a family and siblings of of writers and creators in the industry. Um, Eric, <laughs> right, exactly. What what started you all on that path growing up, and and specifically, what made you gravitate towards comics and genre? And can I can I can I just say one thing? I'm really excited about Magnum PI. We you and I talked about uh, that. We want to get that out. Yeah, there. no, I, I I love Magnum, and I think Eric's done an amazing job with that show, and I'm really glad that it's getting you know another life on NBC. And um, you know, my brother David uh, just wrote a movie for Netflix with uh, Mark Wahlberg and Halle Berry. Um, yeah, everyone keeps busy, uh, which is really great. Uh, to, to answer your question, Jessica, here's my theory. Um, the the there's something in the water in our house. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> here he is. Our dad uh, owns a, a small, 
I like to describe it as a mom and pop elect electronic store. Um, and one day before it was a thing, he brings home this huge hulking box um, that contains this huge hulking device called a VHS machine. And this is like before, like I, I'd even heard of a VHS machine. I was like, what the hell is this thing? And because he actually does business with a lot of law enforcement and, and, and including the FBI, as, as soon as there were VHS machines, there were also bootleg movies. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> the FBI was busting people. And those bootlegs ended up in my father's possession and ended up in our VHS machine. So we collectively, David, we just wore the tapes out. And I, I think when you are exposed to so much material at such a young age, it can't help but make an imprint on you. Um, and it's funny, I feel bad for my parents because, you know, I, I used to be an attorney. I was the only, you know, Eric and David went immediately into writing and I, I took this detour. And so for a long time, my parents could say, well, at least one of them's a lawyer. Like at least one of them has a real life. And, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, I left uh, the practice of law and uh, they were like, I don't know where it went wrong. Um, it's, it, I think it missed it. <laughs> May have been the bootleg VHS. <laughs> I, it's really, yes. Basically, I like to blame my parents for everything, but that's you know, the expect. Nice. <laughs> well, and it, it's true. I, I swear, I I was I was shown The Exorcist, The Night Stalker, Salem's Lot at the age of five, and yeah. when, when that right stuff, it imprints on you. It imprints yes. on you. Oh, don't say that. I, you know, I have to say, you know why? Because. The worst movie I ever saw was the first one I was ever aware of. It was called Frankenstein Conquers the World. And in, in, when I was a little boy and in school and at Atlanta Park, and, and, and I'm thinking, why did I have to see this? And and my friend Connie is yelling, oh, he's Godzilla. He's beating up Godzilla. I'm saying, Connie, that's not Godzilla. So I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just like, oh. It's also like, don't put the spoiler in the title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? What's that's Frankenstein wrong. going to do? Well, yeah. yeah. It's just like, it's like, <laughs> Right, ah, forget it. And I couldn't stop dreaming about it. That's the thing, you know. So you said that, Jessica. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> and oh. in print on you. Um. So now I have to dig in on Legends of Tomorrow, because okay. I right. loved right. Legends of Tomorrow. Thank you for putting Arthur Darville into a Doctor Who coat, and <laughs> uh, that made that made me very happy. <laughs> but. I, my my the thing I loved about Legends was you were able to take lesser known DC characters that hadn't really gotten their due, and give them a platform. Mm -hmm. um, I loved what you did with Jonah Hex with that series. I love I you know I I really enjoyed it. Um, my big question is: Was there a list of lesser characters that you wanted to bring in at some point if you know the show had kept going or if you'd had your druthers what you would like to have seen and, and been able to do um not an actual physical list I, I always kept sort of a mental list of oh these are characters who a i would like to see but also b i think would work well in this universe you know in, in other words like you know work well with the you know the tone of any one of the shows or work well in terms of like okay we can we can produce that you know like there are certain characters and powers that just are are a heavier lift uh in terms of visual effects um but like you know for the i mean this is not a legends character but for arrow um i really really always wanted to get the question uh on oh that. god yes <laughs> me, the question was like you know so obvious and 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 kind of perfect for arrow uh and again talking about a mix of like we can achieve that with our budget and and tone and everything else that character would kind of fit in um you know i was really with respect to legends i was really excited um that you know dc finally gave the approval to use booster gold and it would have been you know that because booster gold is is sort of a perfect character for legends because he's both a time traveler and he's a little on the you know the, the more comedic side and um, you know, you can just do so much, you know, with, with Booster. Booster in Legends to me was like 
a perfect fit. Um, I'm trying to think like what other sort of characters, um, you know, I each- have an idea. <laughs> I, I, I hate to tell you i hate to tell you but the show is canceled um i but, uh, I, I understand but i have an idea <laughs> okay well, well what, what is the idea um this for- is, i have i have brought this up my entire career as, as an interviewer and writer to anyone that i would have listened to it um but you specifically, because of your work and you've talked you, you've worked with guillermo del toro who um had the idea at one point he was wanting to do a, a justice league dark film which i, I would I, that that is my kind of crack and i need it yeah. but the yeah. the one that never gets any play or do in the dc universe is andrew bennett I and know. i would love to see i vampire happen um and i'm talking a retro throwback 1970s based I vampire because those comics were so beautiful yeah. and I'd always kept hope in my heart that that would happen on, on legends, but seeing, knowing that you guys work together, would that ever be something you'd be interested in doing like a, a justice league dark or an I vampire type film or even series? I, well, first of all, you know, and Guillermo knows this, like I'm, I'm available to him at a drop of a hat. If he wants to do something, no matter what it is, I'm, I'm there. I'm, you know, um, you know, I, I was working with him when he was, you know, developing Justice League Dark and I, you know, I don't want to sort of speak for him, but I, I don't get the sense that that's something that he's, you know, particularly interested in, in returning to, but I, I could totally be wrong. Um, I, 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 I love, you know, I love the I Vampire series. Um, and um, it's fine. My, my first exposure to it actually was uh, in Who's Who. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I like, I saw the the page, uh, you know, for, for Andrew Bennett in Who's Who. And I was like, whoa, what is this? This looks really dope. And I went, you know, this is like, you know, back in the, the old days where it was a lot easier to get back issues Mm-hmm. You know, it was a lot harder to get digital copies of anything, but you know, like it was a lot easier Amen. to get copies in the, you know, the comic book store and comic book conventions. And I like, you know, eventually sort of put together the run and was like, this is really, really cool. And I and I agree with you. It was a gorgeous looking book. And the visual actually that they created for Andrew, I thought was like really, like really hit the sweet spot. For me, if I were, if you were to ask me to develop any horror related DC property, it it, that conversation would start and end with Night Force. Um, I would not be like, I'm like, give me Night Force or give me nothing. Like, uh, you know, um, and and the folks at DC know this. I've been talking with them over the years uh, sort of about it, um, you know, because it's it remains one of my all time favorite DC uh, properties. Um, I just think it's so it's so clever. And I've talked to Mark Wolfman about it. He sort of took me through. He was very kind. He took me through sort of the whole origins of that and uh, just getting him back together with Gene Colan after their run on you know, Tomb of Dracula. It's just the whole thing is just, um, you know, it's just such a, a wonderful property. And uh, I would I would love to, you know, if I was going to tackle anything, that's what I would I would tackle. Respect for that. OK, I, I agree. <laughs> a, a quick question yeah. on that note. You mentioned D.C. Have you had a chance to talk to James Gunn about his vision and everything else? Uh, I know it's a little bit, you know, I had no. Just- uh, believe it or not, I haven't been able to get a meeting. Um, wow. Yeah. No, there's just, uh, I don't know, no interest there. Um, you, your guess is as good as mine. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really excited that he, you know, was the one who got the job. I think, you know, for too long, you know, Warner Brothers and, and this sort of, you know, infected, I think, the entire studio. Warner Brothers for the longest time just didn't like superheroes and didn't understand why they you know, had to make movies and TV shows off these superheroes. And they finally have someone at the helm who actually is not, it's not, I, I would have settled for someone who just wasn't embarrassed by them. But uh, with James, you're getting someone who actually knows them and loves them. And I think that that is, you know, job one for anyone, you know, in that position. And I really just love the ambition that that James is coming at this with, which is like, okay, we're going to tell an eight to 10 year long story. It's all going to be connected. And that's just, you know, give it to me. Take my money. Uh, I'm I'm ready. Oh, and uh, Chris Reynolds manages a 44,000 person Facebook group 
DC Legends of Tomorrow on the ass. Was yeah. so oh. there a chance they might bring our show DC lot back? Or do you think it has run its course like Arrow is finished? Uh, well, you know, there's no more Wave Rider sets. Uh, those stages oh. are now empty. Um, <laughs> you know, look, I've learned never say never. Um, I suspect that if you were to see Arrow again or Legends again, it would be part of like some new revival kind of series, you know, um, where we're playing characters you know, from various shows and putting them in a story together if that, you know, if that works, um, you know, I, I'd love to see it, you know, live on in comic books. That would, I think, be pretty cool. Um, you know, the, the crisis uh, on Infinite Earths comic tie in that we did was r ridiculously successful. Um, so, yeah. you know, you, and like I said, you, you just you never know, especially in this business. Um, but uh, I, I so appreciate the fact that there are there are fans, you know, still out there who still care about the shows and that, you know, that, that, you know, when, when James Gunn is not calling you after, you know, nine years of working in this universe, um, what makes it really worthwhile is the fans, you know, that, that's so to James right now is like, call him. <laughs> <laughs> James, it's funny. Jay, James just liked a tweet of mine. Uh, I tweeted something out about wise guy, one of my all time favorite shows. And yeah. he's uh, like that tweet. I'm like, cool. Like, <laughs> We both like the same television. Um, but uh, so maybe I'll cross paths with him one of these days. Oh, man. That just made me think of of Tim Curry as the, the crazy oh, music executive villain. Right. It's the new way. That's a yeah. fantastic Best. series. Best. That, just, that run of it, you can't find any of the episodes of because of the music rights. Uh, I know. Actually, it sucks. <laughs> they just released. I forget who who released it. They just released the entire series, including the unaired Stephen Bauer episodes, and they include the Dead Dog Records arc. So All it of them? out there to be found. Yes. Oh, oh my God. Okay, oh. well, I need to go find that. <laughs> Thank you for making oh, me. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, uh, it flies under the radar, but it's, uh, it is, it's out there. Uh, Jay Faber, who's, you know, obviously one of the Arrowverse writers and a comic book writer, he's, also a huge wise guy fan and he uh he let me know about it i was like not enough people oh, talk it's, about wise guy. it's like you know it's it's incredibly like well priced wow okay i'm buying that yeah. that's after this interview i'm going to go buy wise guy because <laughs> i need to have it um so kind of kind of in conjunction with james gunn and 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 everything that's going on right now with dc and warner brothers um it right now everybody knows the DC fandom is really splintered. It's 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 it's. I mean, if you've gone online, you know what's going on. You've seen it. Yeah. Um. I mean, and I I was telling Zinni this pr prior. I personally was attacked by crazy. I call them Snyder Bros online because I was defending Halloween ends, and apparently you can't like anything without these people attacking you and then you go look at their their um their id and they're proudly you know touting you know this or die you know or <laughs> and you know and doing threats on on twitter about you know their one post said something about they're gonna be there's gonna go something's go down at san diego comic-con if we don't get our way i did see yeah, that. I saw that yeah yeah that's making the rounds so i'm curious as a creator a sane creator who is a good person. And, you're, and, you're, the, you're the first person to describe me that. <laughs> sane <laughs> creator. <laughs> but, you know, you as a part of the DC family, how does this toxicity and craziness affect, you know, you're wanting to work in the brand, working in part of that universe, and also, you know, how it, how it harms creators who are just trying to create within this, world it's the the irony to me is you these these people that are like that are stating oh i believe in superman and wonder woman and batman these are heroes who are for everybody and 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 show truth justice the american way we defend everyone you know and and yet you're attacking everybody well, you know, I think the Venn diagram of the the Snyder Bros and people uh, a certain 
uh, sp uh, end of the political spectrum have sort of proven they have no problems whatsoever with hypocrisy. H hypocrisy for them is a feature, not a bug. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, they're never going to see that inconsistency at all. Um, you know, as a, you know, as a creator, as a writer, my, my bigger concern, honestly, is for the, the people from marginalized communities who they disproportionately beat up on. And sometimes those are people who are involved with the shows, either behind the scenes or, you know, in front of the camera. They, <laughs> you know, they love to go after the actors, which is horrible um, because these are people who are, you know, they, they live a public life by virtue of their job and, and they sort of, you know, are out there uh, and it's very easy to abuse them, uh, to, you know, to people like yourself, Jessica, who, you know, all you do is go online and post something about liking something and you're getting this, you know, this, this swarm um, yeah. of negativity and hatred and small mindedness. Um, and I worry about that, you know, and yes, I mean, the possibility that, uh, you know, a mean tweet today could turn into physical violence tomorrow. Um, you know, uh, and by the way, just to be clear, I, I, I don't, it's not that I think a mean tweet is not harmful. I, I subscribe to the, um, you know, I subscribe to the, the philosophy, uh, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words do the real damage. Um, yeah. and you know, and you see that playing out constantly online, but it, it's a, it's a huge problem that unfortunately I don't know what the solution is except to, we just collectively, as a, you know, representing sane people, we just have to not give these people any oxygen. Exactly. Um, you know, they they Mark, really can we talk it. about that privately with you because I'm working out something con tough with Congress people. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I want to get you back that later. That's I'm glad you mentioned because this advice also I will say as someone who used to engage all the time with every manner of you know human being online, um, I've learned. There's just no point. It's kind of like, oh God, I'm blanking on who said it, but it's like it's like mud wrestling a pig. You know, you get dirty and the pig enjoys it. Like, um, you know, but it's 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 it is a real problem. It's such a real shame too, because it's so funny. Like, you know, but I've even like encountered the differences in the fandoms, like the Legends fans versus the Arrow fans. Like, you know, my wife would be like, I see what all the Arrow fans are saying to you online, but why don't the same people say bad things to you about legends online. I'm like, <laughs> I like to think I'm an equal opportunity offender. Yeah. Um, you know. I, I love that she wanted you to be embattled by everybody. I, well, I think, I think it was more like, this is strange. You know, this is a strange, you know, <laughs> dichotomy. That's um, funny. And I, I just want to be clear. It's, it's Zack Snyder fans. There are very good snacks, Zack Snyder fans. And yeah. I mean, I feel bad for Zack Snyder in the fact that these people are doing this using him as the scapegoat for their reasoning and it's it sucks it it really does i mean you know i think i think this is the you know this is the pitfall of any artist which is that they will use your they will misinterpret your work and they will use your work you know to further their own ends that are not in line with your beliefs yeah um, you know and i i feel you know for for any writer director actor any creative person uh, who has had their work co-opted that way. That's just, you know, that's a terrible, you know, it's a terrible thing. And again, it's, it's part of what makes what's going on online. So insidious. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Like, 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 over the years. Oh, I was just going to say, it just seems like the pandemics kind of ramped it up because people were yes. stuck at home and they just could dwell on their own, I don't know, shortcomings or, what have you, and they stewed in it, and now it's just boiled over. It, yeah, I mean, it's it's not limited to comics or, or television or, or genre. It's, you know, you Everything. see it everywhere. You know, yeah. it, it kind of, we all went collectively nuts. Um, and um, I, I don't know, I don't know sort of how we find our way back to normalcy, but I know that we have to because this, you know, this heightenedness can't sustain itself. Yeah. Amen. Hey, on that note, I have this question, and it has to do with an interview that I did in 2011 with Vince McKay, who's actually been on a couple of shows you've been involved in, good dude. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was laymanning that 
the old model residuals was being damaged. This was in 2011 by reality TV and online programs and shows. And now we have fan produced you know, work and Jessica and I were having this little argument about it. And this is not a mean argument, but an intellectual one. Cause I was saying, hey, look, you know, it's more than just the copyright, but it's the fact that somebody builds a story off something you created and in a sense takes that opportunity away from you. Or am I wrong? What do you think uh, about? You know, that's a good question. I, I I don't see it that way. You know, I you know I, I see it. Oh, I'm sorry, you're you're okay. Now you're you're back. Um, yeah, I don't I don't see it like they're taking food out of my mouth or or taking opportunities away from me. Um, for for one thing, I you know I so appreciate that there's fandom work out there. Um, I make a very determined effort not to see any of it uh, because you know, I don't want to be in a position where I'm accidentally or even subconsciously stealing someone else's idea. Um, so I talk a little bit from a place of, I don't know what the, you know, I don't know what the, uh, you know, what the content out there that's being produced, but I don't, you know, feel threatened by it. I kind of, I kind of like it. You know, when we were working on Arrow, we always said the opposite of love is not hate. It's apathy. Um, so even when they're hating you, they're engaged. They're they're engaged with the product. They're engaged with the show. And that, that also goes for fan fiction and fan videos. And, and you know, that's that's fans expressing their fandom. I'm, and I think any any creative artist um, sort of turns their nose up at that at their peril, like. You know, that, that to me is like, you know, that's like not taking a compliment. That's that's, you know, it, it, it's it's the highest form of compliment. And uh, I, I don't have a problem with it. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I don't know too many people who do, um, you know, to be. Yeah, my 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 what I was telling Zinni was back in the day, uh, Lucasfilm actually had their own website. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they embraced it because it's basically free advertising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what's yeah what's not to, and actually there was a guy who went online this is like spoiler alert um but you know luke skywalker appeared at the end of season two of the mandalorian and there was this guy online who basically somehow went in and sort of even improved the dh yeah. shots and they hired him at ILM. They hired him. yeah wow. he, he and, it, and you can tell the difference from the from that season to yeah. the, the next and they episode were like, they were like we're hiring you. Let us show you this movie called Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and you can see the difference. I think the, the difference, yeah, the, the difference, I'm sorry, the end of season one and season two is- It was in uh, it was in Book, Book of Boba that they brought him yeah. on that. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yes, it that's was right. insane. I, I, uh, I sometimes, I sometimes uh, mix up uh, Book and uh, Mandalorian season two. I, you, you, you in the studio too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I tell you, the, that episode, though, uh, where, you know, a book where, you know, Luke and, again, spoiler alert, Ahsoka uh, are, are shown. I was like, Jeff Kiss. this is the greatest episode of television ever. People were crying. Oh, my God. I was I was beyond thrilled. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I just as a fan, I was like, we get to see this? We get this? Like, you even see, saw, like, they were building the Jedi Temple from the yeah. Like... I mean, I, this was so good. It was so good. I'm curious. I'm going to ask you. This is an off the cuff question. It has absolutely nothing to do with what you're doing. But I'm curious. Who would you love to see as Thrawn? Ooh, good question. Oh, I have my choice, but I'm curious yours because uh, uh, the weakest club in my bag is casting. I am horrible at. It. I have a terrible vocabulary for actors, um, and. Benedict it's Cumberbatch. It's not a fair. <laughs> Wait, who? Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, look, I think, you know, Benedict is great in everything. Um, so, of course, he would do a great job. It's it's funny. I think I was, my head was going towards a more of a physical type. I don't see him being very thrawny. Um, huh, it, in the in the books in the um in the audiobooks especially the guy they do that has his voice has a very cumberbatchian oh. velvety tone but he also they made thrawn into sort of a sherlock holmes of oh. of 
of the empire, like his deductive reasoning and how he plots. And so, I mean, and also just Benedict Cumberbatch would be like, like blue. I mean, <laughs> well, what's what's also would be pretty great is that he would then be in, you know, three major franchises, Marvel, yep. Star Trek and uh, Star Wars. So, yeah. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, I would. Like I would an EGOT, like an Emmy, and a Grammy, and Oscar, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, well, he's just going on collecting all the different major exactly. major properties, which I, you know, I would totally applaud. I would, I would respect that. Um, well, I have one more question for you. I know Zinni does, and hopefully, I, I you know no more. I go off on a tangent about Star Wars. I'm geeking out because I can tell your fellow geek so that oh, makes me happy <laughs> in my office you know <laughs> um, oh you've got the shazam makos back there oh god i love shazam yeah shazam is like my actually here i'll say this um, and you've got the look you've got the idol from <laughs> Indiana Jones. I love the idol, but um i have there's a guy on on ebay who actually uh wait, a guy on ebay who did uh the um wait what no that was that's me the uh old you know jason bostwick oh my god look at that did he yeah. make that he he made the box and uh someone had had released a sort of a, a remake of the migo uh shazam that looked a little bit more like the uh you know bigger Disco. lightning symbol yeah looked a, lot, a little bit more like a bigger symbol you know white cape and everything um so i was like oh i have to get that um, That's yeah, fantastic. My, my Migos, I've got, yeah, I got all, all manner of <laughs> all manner of Chosky's here. I'll I'll give you a little tour around the, the room here. Um so let's let's see. What's that? Um got, it goes all the way up. I've got a I've got Bebo over here. Bebo say, say hi, oh. Bebo. Um, <laughs> so nice. got, um Star Wars stuff. Uh, my Star Wars Pachinko machine. Oh my God! Oh, there's more Migos. <laughs> yeah, there's more Migos. I've got stuff from Arrow. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm showing you because I'm not looking. At it, but... <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is this is my, you know, this is my it's home software. It's my man cave. Um, That's great. But I just allow me to my collection of original comic book art uh, downstairs. Uh, in our house, but apart from that, the geeky stuff doesn't expand past the confines of my office. Nice, I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically my office is the inside of my brain, so I have a feeling <laughs> yours is the same way. That's Very fantastic. Much. So Vinny, Vinny uh, Las Penzuso, our our lovely Vinny, has a question here. He was asking. Mm -hmm. If James ever hires you to write a DC film, okay. which one and which character would you choose? Uh, if I could choose any, yeah, I, I think it would have to be, it would have to be Superman. Um, you know, I was I was eight years old when I saw Superman in the movie and just oh. totally blown away. And I also am one of those people who doesn't subscribe to the theory that Superman is too pure and powerful character to make it interesting. Um, you know, so that would be top of my list. Um, you know, it'd be fun to do a Batman. Um, but uh, and my hope is that one day they're building up to a crisis on the Earths of their own. Um, yeah. you know, it'd be fun to fun to swim in those waters again with more money. God, like we just ran up against so many problems. Oh, um, it, you like, did such a great job though doing that. I loved. That Christ, the it was fantastic, and uh, you brought Brandon Ralph back into the Cape, and that made me cry. So that yep. was, that was so rewarding for 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 everyone involved, uh, and hopefully including Brandon. How hard was it to integrate Supergirl into Legends of Tomorrow initially? Because I was really excited. I thought the outcome was really great, but uh, oh, um, pretty. I mean. You mean? Oh, you mean uh, in the final crisis? Yes. Um, yeah. You know, really. I mean, I think it worked out fairly easily, and part of it is that Melissa is such a incredibly deft and adaptive actor. I mean, you can put her 
in anything, you know, and, and match her up with the ensemble and she's going to shine because she's just, you know, and, and particularly as that character, because you know, Melissa it is Supergirl. I mean, you meet her, you talk to her, you talk to her for five minutes. You're like, oh my God, when you're on the show, you're not acting. Like, are like that person. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's just when you know you've got a, a, an actor with that kind of skill set, you know that you can throw them at anything and, you know, throw anything at them and know it's going to be fantastic. Hey, nothing against CBS. I know this is more Berlani than you, but what happened with CBS and Supergirl? Because I was jazzed. I'm a huge fan of it for some time. And, you know, then yeah, it I don't know. I mean, that was above my pay grade. Um, you know, I, it's, uh, yeah, you got me. It's a mystery. Um, I'm so glad that, you know, especially I'm glad that, that Supergirl uh, came to the TV. And it's funny, it wasn't the move of networks, it was also a move of companies because when Supergirl season one was shot, on the war brothers in Burbank, uh, and when they moved to the W, they moved production up to uh, Vancouver, um, which actually made the crossovers a whole lot easier. I, it would have been very, very difficult, uh, to you know cross over with Supergirl if we were you know separated by an entire you know country border. Wow, uh, Jessica, you want to take us? I think yeah, uh, I I um I have one more question for you, sir. And again, thank you for taking the time for this. Has been well, and I, I don't mean to take us out. I mean, like you know, take us. <laughs> but I really uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and and sharing this and and having the discussion. Oh, um, so my my question for you is, you know, what do you think would be a better course if you um for you and your eyes for DC to go because. We've seen there's been issues with feature films um, that they were doing, you know, the the big budget features, uh, the Arrowverse and the and the series, uh, as well as the animated films, seem to be the perfect place, or at least what really works. Yeah. Do you, you? What do you think is the better course for the future of DC development, TV series or features? Um, you know. I don't think it's a question of one or the other. I'm not trying to dodge the question, but like, I don't think it's a question no. of one or the other. I think, you know, I, I think what, you know, the Arrowverse sort of showed and what Marvel showed is it doesn't actually matter how you begin so much as you begin solid. You begin with something that that is good and works that people like, you know, that's sort of your beachhead and that you build off of that. And whether you, whether your beachhead is a TV show or a movie, or you to a TV show, or you build to a movie. I don't think it matters as much as having that core foundation of this is something that works. This is something that we can, you know, solidly stand upon, and and not try to run before you can. Walk. You know, like you know, we always said like the the thing that we really liked about the Arrowverse was it was built brick by brick. You know, it. it and like, oh, there's a universe one day. It's it's like mm -hmm. it, it was it grew out slowly and organically. And, you know, the crossovers got, you know, bigger and, and more ambitious and, and integrated more, you know, legends sort of spun out of these characters that had appeared on various different shows. Um, I, I like the slow and steady approach. Um, but I also don't have Stockholders to answer to. So, um, you know, who knows how, how well that approach works in the real world. But, uh, you know, I, I, I just as a fan, I just want to see stuff. You know, I don't care. You know, if, if for good and bad, we have blurred the line between TV and film. And at the end of the day, I think, you know, shows like, you know, we were talking about Mandalorian earlier, like shows like the Mandalorian show that people, they, they just want good content and they don't necessarily mm -hmm. care what the package is, you know, what the, what the box it is, it's in, you know, whether it's a, a two hour trip to the movies or, you know, a 40 minute, you know, streaming show, they just want to see stuff that they like, that they enjoy. Um, so I think just, I, I just, want to see good stuff. That's, that's the main thing. But like, you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, I think, I think I might've been saying this offline, but like 
the the first step I already feel really good about, which is they hired someone in James Gunn who really loves these characters, who doesn't just know them like in a you know in a fanboy kind of way, but really loves them in a fanboy kind of way. And I, I really do think that that's sort of the secret of Kevin Feige's success, and I think it's going to be the secret of James's success. Hey, Mark, before we go, do you think that Superman became a bit too on the hulky side? Nothing against J Henry Cobble, who may be our next James Bond, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I had the pleasure of interviewing Ilya Salkind for four hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was really struck with, you know, Superman as reflected by the late Christopher Reeve. And I'm wondering if yeah. we'll see that again, you know. That'd be really interesting. I, I hope so. I mean, look, I love Henry Cavill. He's he's a terrific Superman. And in my mind, never really got the chance to be or to show what he could do as Superman, uh, you know, in, in terms of playing the Clark Kent side of it and playing some of the humor. And, you know, you see a glimpse of it at the end of Man Steel. And, like, I, I, I'm, like, all over that little glimpse. I'm like, oh, that'd be such a great... You know, give me an entire movie of that, you know, um, of that version of Superman and that version of, of Henry's performance. Um, you know, but I I love the idea of, you know, of sort of going back to a more sort of, you know, uh, realistic version of Superman. The thing is, is that I think the, the page has turned, the tide has turned. And it's not just with respect to Superman. It's hard to imagine Christopher Reeve bodying any superhero, you know, yeah. these days, even though to me, Christopher Reeve is the gold standard of, of Superman. Um, you know, so, you know, there's almost, there's, there's a literal arms race in the sense that all these superhero characters, their arms have to keep getting bigger and bigger um, <laughs> you know, until you're like Chris Hemsworth, you know? So I, I don't know. I, I would, for me, I, what I'm thinking of with respect to Superman uh, is, is always trying to get back to Christopher Reeve. Um, and and the, the same thing goes for Lois. Like when we were casting uh, Elseworlds looking for, looking for Lois, uh, I said, let's take a scene from Superman one or Superman two and use that as one of the scenes that the actors uh, read their auditions, because we, we wanted a Margot Kidder type, you know, um and uh you know again that that movie is it, it, you know look it's it's very much a product of its time and it's not perfect you know i'm talking about like changing back time by spinning around the world but it is to me like you know if not the all-time greatest superhero movie certainly in the top three um just yeah. for me and i i just I want to see. I want to see a Superman movie that makes me feel the way that movie did. And actually, that was the first two movies. I happen to like Superman too. Um, you know, I'm 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 uh, in the tank for that movie. So. Oh, Superman I'm, too I'm, is one of the best ever. I'm dying to ask him about Wonder Woman because I think, as much as I like Patty Jenkins and I love her and I've told her so personally, but I I grew up with 1946 Wonder Woman that was obviously muscular but feminine and you know she looked like she could protect the United States right. And so now we got skinny, and I'm thinking, will I ever see the real Wonder Woman, right? Look, I think Gal was a perfect casting, um, like a really fantastic casting. Um, you know, I don't know. It's a good question. I think it speaks to this, like I said, this larger issue of, you know, who we cast and body types that we look for in not just genre movies, but any action movie. Um, and... You know, it's funny. It's like I, I remember you, you mentioned Henry Cavill's James Bond. I remember the huge hullabaloo surrounding uh, Daniel Craig's casting as James Bond. Yeah. He's yeah. blonde, yeah. he's skinny, he's, you know, he's got blue eyes. What the hell? Um, and it just goes to show you get a great actor. It, it's it's more about the actor than what the actor like, you know, uh, from, from below the neck. Um, and I, you know, I, I would love to see our, you know, our casting uh, net get cast, no pun intended, get cast a little wider in terms of, you know, types and body types and everything, because there's a lot of really great, wonderful actors out there who, 
like I said, it's more important that they that they embody the character, not embody the body. Right. Absolutely. There was um, there was a uh, really interesting piece I read that um, shows the transition of Hugh Jackman from when he was cast as Wolverine in the first X Men movie to current, and they're like, "This is the issue with our superheroes." Abs that's actually like the perfect example because that's one character, one actor, and you really do see this arms race that I'm talking about. It's, yeah, it's like he goes crazy. from svelte, but you know, lean and muscled, but lean and not. He looks normal, and then yep. you go to he's just brr and and like rip corded veins and all of that, and it's like, wow, I didn't realize it until I saw it side by side how they've changed the whole dynamic. Hey, and kept, yeah, they, we, they really, really did. Sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, how much time do you have? Because we kept you for an hour, and I don't want you to get mad at me. So I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm good. good. I, I got a, I have a few more minutes in me. At some Wait, point, cool. I got to go bring up my daughter, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I am. I'm a writer slash Uber driver. <laughs> you know, that, that's basically what it means to be a parent. Oh, hey, oh Jessica, you had a question. I mean, to step over you. I apologize. Oh no, no, I'm I'm totally good with. I was gonna say you already have seen Wonder Woman. Her name's Lucy Lawless, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> yes. That would be a great bit of casting. You're absolutely right. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Says, yeah, like kind of like Rosie the Riveter. But I remember the Wonder Woman that I remember. My favorite one comic book. She was bending a railroad track. You mm. know, that was 1946. And I have that, and I thought that's Wonder Woman. You know, that's it. You know, well, Linda Carter will always be my Wonder Woman. Yes. Is, is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. It's not taking anything away from Gal Gadot, who I love. It's just that there's that. You know, it's what you grow up with. Linda Carter. That was my first. Like that. that was my first. <laughs> yeah. You know. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Well, no, that's, that's, it's you know these like I said these things imprint on us at a very young age. Yeah. I, I feel my my dream movie though, and I, I I I just have to say it is if somebody can make Kingdom Come come to life and have Linda Carter be Wonder Woman in that because she still looks the same. I, that would be I don't great. Know, I, I get Michael Keaton out, put him in the cow, and just do it. I would love that. That that I, again, take my money. I'd I'd be totally totally down for That's that. One of my I favorite hope comics all time. So you know, good. master. I hope that James's master plan has room for those those offshoots because some of the the best you know comics that DC has are the Elseworlds. Yeah, you know stuff. Um, I don't. Leatherwing, the Leatherwing Pirate Batman is one of the coolest yeah, damn things just, I've ever read in my life. <laughs> so, you know, like, I, I would love to be. I would love if you know, in you know, in success. DC could, you know, the live action channel of DC, the live action version of DC could show us these different, you know, worlds and these different realities because it'd just be cool. You know, who wouldn't want to see Gotham by Gaslight? You know, yeah. um, you know, I, I've, uh, I've already talked to David Dasmalton, the guy on my shirt right now, and I've already asked him, I'm like, who, what, what one would you want to do and why would it be Red Rain? And he said, <laughs> oh, yes, no, exactly. And I would be Dracula. And I'm like, sold. You've got it. <laughs> I'm getting a very pro vampire vibe off of you, Jessica. Not, not yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> As charged. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. On that note, um, I want to have you back. And uh, had some yeah. technical difficulties. I was back fixing it, everything else. Uh, All good. Hey, cool. Uh, stick around the backstage, Mark. And okay. everybody, uh, thank you for joining me. Chris, thank you for allowing me to join your universe of 44,000 fans of DC Legends of Tomorrow. And uh, this is the man. And uh, I'm pleased this punch is how this went. Mark, couldn't have done it without you, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you guys very much. This is and it's fun fantastic fun. to meet you, sir. Thank you for what you made. <laughs> you don't have to push a button. Stick around. We'll we'll get you out the right way. Okay. And it's this broadcast, everybody. Uh, subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube and bookmark OaklandNewsNowBlog.com. And uh, we'll be.